Alright pal, I'm Korean Billy and now I am at Scotch Whiskey Experience and I'm with the tour guide Cameron. Hi folks, hello. Because I am now in Scotland, even with this outfit, I just want to be more friendly to the local people. So I'm really tempted to learn some Edinburgh words and phrases. Some words which a lot of tourists get like really confused about when they're over here uh -huh. is words like Ken and Barry. Barry means something's like good, like, oh, that's Barry, mate. That's Barry. Or Ken means like, I know. If someone says something, you're like, aye, I can. If you're saying, I don't know, then we say, I don't can. I don't can. <laughs> oh, do you can that whiskey up there? That's, that's well, Barry. You can whiskey up there. That's Quite baddy. What about like greetings then? One of the most common ones is to go, alright, alright, all right, pal. Alright, pal. Like, I... Pal would be just the same as the I mean, yeah, yeah, you can use pal as well. You can go, alright, mate, alright, pal. It's yeah. not really like, alright, pal. It's yeah. alright. 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 I'd say scran is quite a Scottish word. Scran. Like, you're, you just say to your mates, oh, do you want to go get some scran? Wee dram. Wee dram. If you want some whiskey, you'd ask for a wee dram. What exactly is the definition of dram then? I wouldn't say it has a specific definition. Dram is just a, a portion of whiskey. So just wee dram is just a, give me a little bit of yeah, whiskey there. Give me a wee bit of whiskey. Oh, so as a local, if you can visit only one place in Edinburgh before you die, which place would you visit? A good bar with lots and lots of whiskey. Ah, <laughs> that's very typical of you. I'd just go and sit at the top of Arthur's Seat. Fantastic view over the city. Even if the weather is rubbish, it's nice and atmospheric when you're up there. For me personally, like I love going up north and climbing a lot of Monroe's and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So Arthur's Seat is kind of like a little bit of up north, but right in the center of the city, I think. Oh. It's absolutely stunning. And you can just look down the end of the Yeah, say. it's beautiful. Are there also other spots or areas which you would like other tourists to visit as a local in Edinburgh then? Dean Village, really stunning, kind of old timey part of Edinburgh. And when you're in there, you feel almost like separated from the entire city itself. So it is, it's quite a cool wee like hidden gem of Edinburgh, I think. Just a tiny wee village in the middle of Edinburgh. Yeah. And like you feel like you've gone back a hundred years. And again, what is we? Small. Like, I get confused <laughs> by your Vocabulary, okay, we is small, okay. Yeah. What kind of food should people visiting here should try then? A deep fried pizza and deep, a deep fried Mars bar. Deep fried pizza? Absolutely. So Scottish, like we just love to deep fry absolutely everything and anything. That exact reaction, they're quite right. confused why you would deep fry pizza. Honestly, incredible. Go to a chippy in, in Edinburgh and ask for chippy sauce. It's pretty much only an Edinburgh or like southeast thing in Scotland because if you go to Glasgow and ask for chippy sauce, they'll look at you like you're crazy because they just do like salt and vinegar in Glasgow. Whereas in Edinburgh and the surrounding area, we do chippy sauce, which is basically just brune sauce with vinegar in it. It's brilliant. I'm definitely going to gain some weight you know, after <laughs> visiting Edinburgh. Well, it sounds very tasty. Anything else which I don't really get a heart attack? You can't come to Edinburgh or Scotland without having haggis, neeps and tatties. What is tatties? It's potato. Smashed up, mashed potato. It's just the word potato, tatties. Yeah, the in word your... for potato is just tatty. It's an absolute staple. We have a whole holiday where we uh -huh. eat haggis, neeps and tatties religiously for Burns Day. As an expert, like what kind of whiskey would you recommend? recommend to a whiskey beginner then? Try as much as you can until you figure out what you like because ev <laughs> everyone has their own different tastes when it comes to whiskey. Right. So I think a lot of people think specifically with say like Isla whiskies that mm. um, so a lot of people get turned off whiskey because they'll try some smoky whiskey and think mm. it's terrible but then also at the same time newer people to whiskey they'll try an Isla whiskey for the first time and that's what gets them hooked mm. so that just shows you like the diversity between everyone's taste. So it's all about trying as many different whiskies that you like, finding the ones that you do like the style of whiskey that you like, maybe the region you like, and then start experimenting within that. So say you try a whiskey from Speyside, and you're like, oh, that was absolutely stunning, I want to try some more of that. So you'll go and find more whiskeys from Speyside, or any of the other regions, and just start experimenting with them. See what similarities they have, what's different, and experiment with whiskey. I think that's what's great about whiskeys. There's so many different variations. Get as many hangovers as possible then. I yeah. would like to encourage responsible drinking to everyone. <laughs> so it's not necessarily like a beginner stuff from the weaker one and then move on to the stronger one then it's just a different type yeah it's all about just different types i mean your stronger cask strength whiskies which are higher in that alcohol percentage again they can seem a wee bit off-putting to some people mm -hmm. but then at the same time to other people that can be the thing that gets them hooked mm -hmm. so it's all about finding what you like mm -hmm. all right.